Welcome to PlayPianoToday.com. This is the course introduction through Chapter 3 from Blues for Piano and Keyboard. Gospel, rock and roll, country, or jazz? What do they have in common? Each one of these styles draws heavily on elements of the blues. In fact, if you want to become a great player of gospel, rock and roll, country, or jazz, you've got to first master the blues. In this chapter, we're going to explore the form of the blues, as well as some of the basic chord structures and patterns that give the blues their distinctive flavor. Welcome to Blues for Piano and Keyboard. Gospel, rock and roll, country, and jazz music all find their roots in the I'm so lonesome I could cry blues. Everyone knows when they hear music with a blues flavor. Whether it's black gospel, straight up rock and roll, rock and country, or swing and jazz. But very few musicians are able to produce this kind of music on the keyboard. You certainly can't learn to impart a bit of the blues to your music by reading it from a page, well, at least not very convincingly. In fact, the best way to learn to play the blues is to hang out with someone who's playing the blues. That way you can look over their shoulder and steal all their blues riffs, tips, and techniques that really bring this style to life. And you know that's exactly what I hope to give you through this blues course. Now everything in this blues course builds on our original course titled Pattern Piano and Keyboard. Pattern Piano and Keyboard starts from the ground up. It assumes that you've never played, but then it quickly progresses through college level techniques. If you're brand new to music, or if you already play, but you'd like to learn to play piano or keyboard by ear, check that course out at playpianotoday.com. Here we go. The first thing we need to do is look at the form of the blues. Maybe you've heard of the 12 bar blues. This means that there are 12 measures or bars that repeat over and over. Within each of these 12 bars or measures, there's four beats. In the upcoming blues chapters, there's lots and lots of video that's zoomed in up close at the keyboard level, and you can see the details of what each hand and finger are doing. But at this point, in the first chapter, we're not quite ready yet to look at specific chords or notes. Instead, we're looking at an overview of the 12 bar blues form. In fact, you can see it there on the screen. 12 bars or measures, each containing one chord. And to help you keep track of where we are in the 12 bar blues, just follow the circle. It'll follow along with what I'm playing on the piano. One final thought before I play through the 12 bar blues. I want you not to be too concerned about what notes I'm playing. At this point, I just want you to get a sense for the overall form of the blues. Are you ready? Here we go. Here's C. Two, three, up to F. Two, three, back to C. Two, three, four, C. Second line. Here's F. Two, three, four, F. Back down to C. Two, three, four, C. Last line. Here's G. Two, three, four, F. Two, three, four, C. Two, three, four, G. All right. Take it home. <laughs> All right, that's pretty funky stuff. Hang on, because in the chapters ahead, we're going to really dig into this blues style and figure out how to bring it to life on the keyboard. In the next audio clip, you're going to hear me talk about fifths, sixths, and sevenths. Now, if you took our original course, you already know how fifths, sixths, and sevenths are built. But just to be sure, let's do a quick refresher. How do we build a fifth? For the sake of practice, let's say we want to build a fifth in the scale of C major. Starting on the root of the C major scale, count up five notes in the scale of C. It's easy to count up five notes in the scale of C. After all, they're all white notes. However, if you understand the first 20 minutes of our original course titled Pattern Piano, you'll understand very clearly how to build a fifth 
in any key or scale. Now that you know what fifths are, let's use them to build a simple foundation in the blues. Look at the blue box again, the 12 bar blues. For each chord, I'm going to play a fifth built on that chord and then hold it for four beats. Here we go. Here's C, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C. Second line, here's F, two, three, and again, F, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, C, two, here comes G, G, two, three, four, F, two, three, you can do it, C, two, three, four, G, two, three, now we're just at the foundational stages at this point, but don't be afraid to review that as many times as you need to to get it really solid and then move on. In the last audio clip, I played a fifth for each chord and then I held it for four beats, like this. Now we're going to build on that foundation and start using sixths and sevenths. To make a sixth, simply count up one note higher than the fifth. But this is super important. Count up one note in the scale of the chord that you're playing. Now here's where it can seem to get a little complicated. Depending on the scale or the chord that you're playing, that sixth can be a black note or a white note. But don't worry, there's a very simple trick that will allow you to find the right note. In our original course titled Pattern Piano, we looked at how all major scales are a simple pattern of half steps and whole steps. Because of this, some scales look radically different. For instance, C major has no black notes, while A major has three black notes. But they're all based on the same simple pattern of half steps and whole steps. Now here's the trick. If you learn to use this pattern, you'll be able to quickly find any note. No matter what key you're in, make sure you get the original course. Now we'll also be using the dominant seventh in this audio clip. The dominant seventh is the bread and butter chord of the blues, and it's the number one spice that you'll use as you learn to cook up a nice tasty batch of the blues. Now the dominant seventh chord is a different beast. Don't worry about what key you're in. Just find the sixth and then go to the very next note higher. Remember, some dominant sevenths will be black notes and some will be white notes. Just remember to go to the very next note up from the sixth no matter what key you're in. Now we're going to use the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh in each measure. On the first beat, we're going to play a fifth, just like we did in the last example. On the second beat, I'm gonna stretch my hand up a little higher to play a sixth. Then on the third beat, I'm gonna stretch that hand out a little more, play a dominant seventh. Then on the last or the fourth beat of each measure, I'm gonna come back down and play a sixth. So the entire first measure of the 12 bar blues, where the chord is C, sounds like this, all four beats. One, two, three, four. Here it is again. One, two, three, four. It's pretty simple to do. Let's go on to the second measure, which is an F. One, two, three, four. And then back down to C. One, two, three, four. And then C again. Two, three. And then up to F, second line. Two, three, four, F. Back down to C. C again, and finally, the last line, G, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, and C, two, three, four, G, two, three. So far it's pretty simple, but it's solid, and this is the left hand foundation that'll pull everything together. And the next thing that we're going to do is build on this left hand foundation. We're going to add this right hand funky thing. Isn't that cool? Nice little funky thing. Alrighty then. Let's dig into the next chapter of the blues. <laughs> <laughs>